Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon for notification of up and coming videos. Today I'm going to be talking about stone bream, um, pretty much the traces that we make for it as well as the more sophisticated ones that we can use. Okay, so here we go guys, this is our Kingfisher saltwater sports trace. You will get two traces in one of these little um, pouches that we do over here, hang tags. Okay, so pretty much what they look like, and I've just done one up for you here. is a hook, a swivel, with a piece of nylon. You attach your sinker to the bottom piece of the nylon. The swivel that comes out on the side, away from the hook, is where you're going to attach your main line. So let's just do that quickly and show you. I'm going to grab my combo here. I'm going to tie my figure of eight on. One, two, three times. Okay, there we go guys, it's as easy as that. You can see here the swivel comes out, the sinker goes down, and the arm on the left will have your hook on. And it's as easy as tying your bait onto that, and you're ready to fish. Okay, so here we go for my trace that I recommend you look at. It's quick, it's easy to tie. We take our maxima 5.5 kilo, and the reason we use light maxima nylon, like 5.5 kilo, is it just gives the bait more movement in the water. Okay, and as you know, maxima has been around for years. It works like a dream. It's ultra green, so it pretty much disappears in the water. It's also quite a soft line compared to a fluorocarbon. Um, fluorocarbon line is a very hard line. It's a lot denser, so it actually sinks and keeps your bait on the bottom. We want our bait to move around for the stone bream. Okay, so again, all I'm going to do is literally arm length apart. In the middle, 30 centimeters, you can see 30 centimeters from one side to the other side, but we've doubled the nylon. We're going to do an overhand granny knot. So we go around once. We're going to go over twice. Over there. Just lubricate, pull tight, grab the knot with your finger, and we're just going to tie another granny knot once, and again over twice. So we're just repeating the whole process, but about five to eight centimeters away from the first one. So you can see there's one knot there, one knot there. Okay, that's going to be our arm that we have. We then take our mustard scissors and just cut any side of the nylon that you want. So you pretty much, I'm just going to hold it like this, going to have an arm coming off of it. So you can see over there, there's an arm coming off if you hold it straight up like so. The bottom part, which is about 40 centimeters in length from there where the arm is, from there to there is about 40 centimeters in length. You can make it longer if you want, if you need more movement and the sea is quite flat. The bottom part, we just attire our sinker and we like to use quite light sinkers for stone bream fishing. We need that movement in the water, that surge must move the sinker backwards and forwards over the grass, over the ledges and that. Um, and of course, as the surge comes in, the stone bream come in and then as it goes out, the stone bream go out. So, a light sinker definitely makes a big difference as far as getting a bite goes. Okay, so there's your sinker. We then take the arm, which is that part there, and slightly below or above the sinker R is where we're going to cut it. So that's the length we want it to be. But, bear in mind, we still haven't attached the actual hook to it. Okay, so, Marutu. And this one is a size 12, which is an ideal size for catching stone bream. 
And I promise you now, once you've used the Marutu circle hook, you won't go back to using another hook for catching stone beam. So that's pretty much what the hook looks like. It's sort of a J, but it's also a circle. <clears throat> so it's one of those few hooks that you can actually just leave. And as the water comes in and your sinker comes towards you, there's a lot of slack. So you just wind up the slack. And as it goes away, you can just dip your rod. And if you've got a bream on, you just tighten up and you got it. So you can either hit or you can just wind. It's very, very simple. It works like an absolute charm. Okay, so how we actually attach the hook to it. You go through the eye of the hook. Give yourself quite a bit to work with. And you're just going to wrap it around three times. So there's nothing fancy about it. Once, two, three times around. Take it back through the tag end. And just pull ever so lightly on it. Take the tag end, which is this part here. Pull tight and slide down to the eye of the hook. Cut off. <coughs> The tag end. And don't forget, if I did it a bit too quickly here, top right hand side corner, you will see how to tie the figure of eight um, either around the R or around the shank. So just click on it, top right hand side corner, and guys, you'll see how to do it. It takes you to a link, and the knot tying part of it will be there on how to tie or snell a circle hook. Okay, so there it is. So there's your arm, and if you put it next to it, you can see that the hook isn't quite where the sink is. So that's a perfect length for it to be. And again, you've got the arm here that keeps the, the line away from wrapping around the actual nylon. Okay, so there it is there. Another nice little trick to this whole thing is to actually make a loop on the top of the nylon. So what we're going to do is you can either tie it to your swivel, which is attached to your rod, or you can just do this. And the reason we do it is for our fast attaches. So again, we're just going to do over and granny knot once, twice, like so. Lubricate, pull tight, cut off. And I'm going to show you why we make that little loop. Okay. So the reason we make the loop is we use these mustard fast tatches. There they are there. They're very small. I'm just going to attach it to my little kiddies combo quickly, and I'll show you how quick and easy it actually works. How we attach it is with a figure of eight. So we go through the eye, like so. We're doing a figure of eight. Pull tight. You can use a Pelham knot as well. And again, if you want to see how to tie a Palomar knot to it, just click on the top right-hand side corner, and it'll take you to Palomar knots or figure of eights. Cut off the tear again. Okay, so there's our mustard fast attach. And what we do is we go straight on, straight over, and it's now attached to our combo. There we go. So there is our trace already done. Obviously, you, you do get stuck. And you do break off, so the quickest, easiest thing is once that happens, your hook breaks off or the sinker breaks off, you want to attach a new one, all you do is just take the fast attach around and over, and you attach your next one, and you're good to go. Quick and easy, guys. Another little trick to making life easier for you is to put it on a pool noodle. Okay, so here we go. Let's grab a pool noodle. I'll show you what the. Obviously, your pool noodles will be long like that. All you do is you just cut a little groove into it, and you can put your pool noodles or your traces onto the pool noodles. There's a whole lot done. I'm just going to take one off quickly. And how we attach it to a pool noodle is with paper clips. So I'm just going to take the first one, go around, find the paper clip, pull it off. Take your hook undone, then you unwind the whole thing, and you're good to go. So there is a trace taken off. There is my loop over there. Get my combo quickly. There's my combo. All I do, again, is just clip it on, 
over and under. Attach my sinker to the end piece. And there I've got a double one done. Quick and easy, guys. So a pool noodle helps you keep your traces all nice and neat. And I'll show you how easy it is to put it together. Okay, so to put on a pool noodle, all you're going to do is take your hook, stick it in, and wrap it around the pool noodle. Just keep on going. So whether you've got one hook or two hooks, very easy, up to you. You then take your paper clip, go through your loop, over the line, and it just basically keeps everything neat and tidy. Okay, so that's just a little trick for fishing quite fast or fishing smart. Pool noodle, guys, can't beat it. Keep them in a little airtight packet when you're on the beach. And you're good to go. Okay, baiting it. So I'm just going to show you how we bait these uh, traces for stone bream up. Very quick and easy. The four most important baits that you can use for catching stone bream is obviously cracker, prawn, sardine, and squid. Okay, so. I'll just show you how to bait up, and I'm going to use our Kingfisher Saltwater Sports Trace. I'll show you how we bait that one up. Okay. Sardine wise, there's my hook, 92247. All I'm going to do is take a sharp knife, take the sardine, and work away from yourself. Always remember to work away from yourself so you don't hurt yourself or cut anything. Cut that off. Take the hook, go through the back, and the skin side is that side, that is the fleshy side. So we always like to work with the fleshy side facing outwards. And all I'm going to do is just roll it over like that, allowing the flesh to be exposed. Another very important thing is to use the Kingfisher thin latex cotton. Okay, the thinner the cotton, the better it works for your smaller edible fish. Okay, so all I'm going to do, take the thin latex cotton like so, and you're wrapping it around the bait. Okay. And just work your way to the back of the actual trace. Here we go, guys. It's quick and easy as that. There's the sinker, there's the trace, there's the bait. Made simple for you guys. Okay, so there's the trace, like I said, the bait, cotton done, and you're ready to fish. Okay, so there's pretty much the quickest, easiest way of doing it. Okay. For the circle look, however, I'll just take our circle look. There's our trace, done with the Marutu hook. To bait that up with sardine, and again, I'll just turn it over. Just to take sardine and you just fill it to, like so. And all we like to do is just cut it at an angle to give ourselves a bigger piece to work with. Again, that's all I'm doing. Cutting one piece that looks like that. Make sure I got the cotton. Yeah, there's the cotton. There's our circle hook. Take the circle hook and go through the top part exactly like we did it before with the um, sardine. And you pull it back to the back part. So where the <clears throat> skin is and the knot starts, that's where I'm going to start tying my cotton. Let me do this. And all we do is just lightly cotton it around that area, working back to the end part over there. There we go. When we get there, I'm 
we cut the second piece. We lay the second piece right up against it. Okay, so just take the second piece, lay it next to it, and lightly cotton it up. And work again to the back of the actual hook. It's as easy as that to bait up a circle hook for a stone bream. So it's two pieces of sardine back to back. And that's what it looks like. Can't get simpler than that for a stone bream. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you how to use a prawn. Whether it be a cracker or a simple red prawn, pring prawn, white prawn, it's up to you. All we're going to do is take the shell off. And again, this is for baiting up for stone bream. There we go. So there's our pink prawn. And again, the easiest way to do it is to just butterfly the prawn. There we go. So we butterfly the prawn. And again, we cut it at a, a long angle, if I can put it that way. Lightly tap it just to soften it up a little bit. Take our circle look, our Marutu circle look. At the top, we stick the actual prawn. Pull it until it gets to, again, where the knot is of the actual hook. Okay, then we take our cotton and we're just going to wrap it around. So there we go, I'm just going to take the cotton and the, remember, can't stress this enough, thin latex cotton. And we're wrapping it around where that knot is. Work our way back down. And we just tie it off behind the actual thing. And that's it there, guys. It's as easy as that to put the cotton on or the prawn on or your cracker on. Normally when we use a cracker, we'll put two cracker or we can thread it through the cracker. It's up to you. But that for a prawn is the simplest way of doing it. Last but not least, the one that stays on the longest that you don't have to keep on cottoning up. So, Dad, take note of this one. So, it's probably the easiest one out of all of them as far as uh, baiting up goes. Take your little Falkland squid, Patagonian squid, doesn't make a difference. And all you're going to do is you're just going to cut strips. So, you cut your strips, and you'll see they're long and thin. There we go, long and thin strips. Best way to do it is to take two thin strips, like so. Take your Maruto hook, and you go straight through the center. Give yourself a little bit to work with there. Come back on yourself, like that. Okay, so you've got two long tentacles here. Take your second piece, and you're going to do exactly the same. One, and come back on itself. So what you've got is a whole lot of little... You've got a whole lot of little tentacles sitting there. Tentacles all over the place, just sitting there. Now, the, as it moves through the water, the tentacles are going to move. The stone bream are going to come along and start biting on the actual tentacles and eventually they'll end up at the hook end here and I promise you now, you're just going to get slack line, it's going to come, come, come and you just keep on winding and you've got a stone bream on. Or as this water surges backwards, as it goes back, oh, there's a stone bream already attached. The nice part about a circle hook when you're fishing for a stone bream is if you don't hit, the stone bream on the next wave will come back again and eat that bait. So you might have one or two little bites where you can actually feel him biting, 
But if you just leave it there and you don't hit, I promise you now that stone bream will come back the next time and he'll floorboard you. Okay, so quick and easy. Can't get easier than that. I mean, guys, there we go. That for fishing for your kids. So quick, so easy, and it works like a dream. Circle hook doesn't get stuck as easily as a J hook does. So for a dad that's a little bit on the lazy side, use a circle hook and you'll be pleasantly surprised how much more time you can spend relaxing while watching your son or your daughter fish. Guys, go out there, get these Marutu hooks. They don't get stuck as easily than a J hook. They are easy to bait up and yeah, so much more fun. I promise you now, your, your son and daughter will have a lot more fun fishing when using those. Go out there, guys, and enjoy.